essay questions. That's one of your essay questions. And and Paul who said describe and then it answer ten to nine. So we're gonna look at that right now. And this mechanism not only controls the GFR, but it also controls your blood pressure. So we're gonna look at it. And some of this should come back to your remembrance because we've talked about we've talked about this before. Now this is anchor tensing mechanism. So here when you look at the declining blood pressure. Looking at declining blood pressure. And I look at my kidney. My kidneys will always sense this and it will cause me to release my renin by what cell? Say it again, say it loud. My JG cells, because we know where they are now, right? Because my JG cells sit right on what? What they sit on? Where do my JG cells sit? What are they resting on? Mm -hmm. My what? My afferent and efferent arterioles. So these arterioles right here is where my JG cells sit. They sit right across that area. So these cells are sensing pressure. Those are my mechanical receptors. They're sensing pressure. So anytime I have a decrease, then it's going to sense that and it will allow these cells to release the red. So you know where that's coming from now. So you say your JG cells are stimulated to release the red. Now, this is some powerful stuff. We know that this stuff will then do what? That rid is going to circulate throughout my body. Mm -hmm. And it has a substance that it can act <coughs> on that is released by your liver called angiotensinogen. Now that's a long little word, but it is a substance that is produced in the liver, so it's already present in your body. It's inactive. And Brennan likes this stuff because Brennan said, hey, I can act on the angiotensinogen and I can convert it to angiotensin 1. Now, who remembers what the effect of angiotensin 1 is? Vasoconstriction? A mild vasoconstriction. Make sure you say mild. <coughs> a mild basal constrictor. And it's very mild. It's not strong at all. So you get slight basal constriction. Slight. So now, this substance starts to circulate all throughout the body. And it's going to circulate through my lungs. And it's going to be acted on by my A cell that's located in the lung. And these cells will convert that now to my angiotensin 2. So in my mind, it's the angiotensin 2 that does the most work because this one is a strong vasodilator. A vasoconstrictor, strong or powerful. Basal constrictor. You said the eight cells secrete that? No, the eight cells inside the lungs yeah. will act on angiotensin 1 and convert it into angiotensin 2. Eight cells that are found inside the lungs will act on angiotensin 1. and then cause this to become angiotensin 2, which is a much more powerful vasoconstrictor. So, when we start looking at vasoconstricting, 
what vessels in the body do you think it's concentrating on? Arterial? Say again. Arterial? No. Yeah, definitely, you know. Is yeah, it the capillaries, though? Is it, isn't it more like capillary? Well, if, if what I'm trying to get you to say is <coughs> all the vessels out in the extremities, all of my peripheral <coughs> vessels, <coughs> so my capillary bed out peripherally, nothing around here. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want you to think constriction is occurring in this area at all. Never, ever. This is always away from the heart. So, let's think about it. Now we know all our vessels, right, because everybody has blood tracing and everything mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So just think about that for a moment. Every single vessel out in the periphery constricting. So, if every single vessel out in the periphery is constricting, <coughs> then I have a strong resistance going on. And resistance is what? Opposition to flow. So that resistance will eventually cause me to increase my pressure. Now, now, at the same time this is happening, this angiotensin that's circulating in the body now is going to come over here and affect my kidneys. My kidneys are going to be affected and it's going to particularly cause this gland right here, my adrenal gland, to say hey to the cortex, we're talking cortex area, and then it will release my aldosterone. And we've been talking about aldosterone. And what's the effect of my aldosterone? Somebody quick? What does aldosterone do? It has to do with the water. Okay, it has to do with the water. Say what? <coughs> I'm going to reabsorb all remaining sodium. Aldosterone will affect what area specifically? We talked about this in class. What area would this target? What area along the nephron unit was that target? Where? Two views? Which one? I need you. No, no. Aldosterone, aldosterone. I got two tubules. What are they called? Proximal and distal. Which one does this affect? Which one? Aldosterone. Aldosterone affects which one? Distal. Distal. Only. 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 Aldosterone is only going to affect my distal coming to you, period. So when that filtrate flows through there, if there's any sodium remaining, the distal convoluted distal convoluted tubule has been spoken to by aldosterone and says reabsorb that, and it'll pluck out every ion that's sodium and reabsorb that back into your capillary bed. It only does that to sodium, not like chlorine or anything. Only sodium. Now I will say this one thing. Aldosterone not only controls sodium, we haven't got there yet. And I'll throw this out there. Aldosterone also controls potassium. Haven't got there yet. So, 
Under the influence of this aldosterone, every granule of sodium ion will be reabsorbed back into the body, period. So, someone said water, meaning water follows salt. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going to increase my body 